Its fiercest critics say, it's the corporate face of evil. When people express fears over corporate control of food and genetically engineered foods, one name invariably comes up, Monsanto. Now, one of the most controversial corporate brands is part of a massive $66 billion merger with German chemical conglomerate Bayer. Bayer's takeover of Monsanto, if approved by regulators, would make the new company the largest agribusiness on the planet, selling 29% of the world's seeds and 24% of its pesticides. But the move follows a rush of agribusiness consolidation in recent months, with ChemChina Syngenta and DuPont Dow Chemical forming their own multi-billion dollar agri-giants. The Bayer-Monsanto deal would leave the world's farmers with a duopoly. Bayer-Monsanto and Dow for seeds, Syngenta and Bayer-Monsanto for chemicals. Bayer CEO Werner Baumann has said that the merger will provide farmers with new technology and better solutions. But critics say reduced competition in the market could actually hamper innovation and lead to slower improvements in crop yields to feed a rapidly growing global population. Genetically modified foods, or GMOs, as a technology is controversial in itself. On one hand, it's hailed as a solution for farmers who face severe conditions like drought and floods. The reality is farmers need tools. They need better seed, they need tools to help manage pests, and the planet's growing, the climate's getting more challenging, and so then the question gets down to what kind of tools do farmers need in order to feed a growing planet? On the other, it's accused of causing cancer, despite the fact that research on the health risks of GMOs is inconclusive. It's important for me to be here because for my children, we're feeding them non-organic food and it has so much pesticides, so much chemicals that it's going to hurt them in the long run. There's no research to say what's going to happen to them. And it's also been associated with a massive die-off of honeybees, an alarming development considering that one-third of human beings' food supply is linked to pollination. While Monsanto has been criticized for its tactics in leading the charge for genetically engineered foods and pesticides, whether the merger with Bayer will mean more GMOs in general is unclear. If the merger pushes up the price of food, then more farmers could be turned away from buying GMO seeds. Supporters of the deal say antitrust policy shouldn't be politicized by anti-GMO activists with ulterior motives. But then again, anything involving Monsanto is difficult to politically sanitize. And the company's critics point out that their worries are rooted in the monopolization of the seed market by a GMO giant, one that could soon be supersized. Randolph Nogel, The Newsmakers. Well, joining me now is Professor Alan Felsot, an environmental toxicologist at Washington State University in the US. And from Dehradun in India, I'm joined by the environmental activist Vandana Shiva, who is also a leader of the International Forum on Globalization. Thanks both of you for joining us. Vandana Shiva, let me start with you first. You, you think that this Bayer-Monsanto merger is a bad idea. Tell me why. Well, individually, they're a bad idea. After all, Bayer is not just a pharmaceutical company that made uh, aspirin. It was part of, part of IG Farben, and it made the gases that killed people in concentration camps during Nazi Germany. It was involved in making the poison gases. Both of them have a history of making war chemicals. Both of them have, have a history of being war criminals. They've been tried. And now the two come together to be even bigger war criminals. That's why we are organizing a tribunal to try Monsanto in middle of October, because they're going beyond the law everywhere. Bayer was sued in Europe. It sued the European government. Monsanto was sued by Indian government. It's countersuing our government. They really think they're above the law. They think they're too big to be regulated. And their merger is basically sending a signal to governments and people of the world, no one can control us. People will control them. OK, so let's just put we their do history. We sure. their poison. Sure, I just want to put the history aside, because then we, we could get into a discussion about whether Volkswagen should continue to make cars, right? Let's just put that aside for just a second. Let me ask you, what's your biggest gripe with 
um, this potential new company? Is it the monopolization and the controlling of the seed market, or is it your, your bigger problem with GMOs in general? Which one is it? My big problem is them trying to claim they have invented seeds and take patents on it and push farmers into destitution. GMO is merely a door through which they enter the world of monopoly and patenting. That is the serious issue. And in India, they are facing court trials because of this issue. GMO is merely a cover-up. The reality is ownership of seed and the pushing of farmers in debt and creating an agrarian crisis wherever they enter. Okay, Alan Falsot, this new company would become the largest agribusiness on the planet, selling 29% of the world's seeds and 24% of its pesticides, according to the best available calculations out there. That would be some mo monopoly, right? That can't be a good thing, right? Well, I think uh, many countries' regulators are going to have to determine whether it's monopolistic and thus legal in their particular countries. So right now it's on table, uh, just as the other mergers, uh, such as with uh, Syngenta and Synchina, uh, DuPont and Dow, are up for review by regulators. So actually nothing's happened yet. If Bayer and Monsanto were to merge, it would be a very large company. However, I'm not uh, enamored with uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, I can tell you our, my concern as a scientist would be, uh, will other scientists from this merger be shed, thus not have a diversity of scientists working on issues? Uh, I would be concerned that it might slow down development, could speed up development. We're just not sure at this point. Um, I think that what's important to remember is that merger or no merger, we're talking about companies that make tools. Uh, these are companies that will not influence commodity markets. Commodity markets are independent uh, of the tools. Alan, Bernie Sanders says, and I quote, the attempted takeover is a threat to all Americans. These mergers boost the profits of huge corporations and leave Americans paying even higher prices. Not only should this merger be blocked, but the Department of Justice should reopen its investigation of Monsanto's monopoly over the seed and chemical market. A lot of people think Bernie Sanders is a reasonable guy. How would you respond to him, Alan? Well, as I said, there's not a relationship between the prices par farmers pay for their seeds and the tools and the commodity markets. The commodity markets run independently. Now, if I was a farmer, I might have concern that prices might be elevated uh, if there's less opportunity for diversity of tools. On the other hand, we've seen prices come down as tools have been more mature. So I think it's really important to get the economics straight. Vandana Shiva, this merger will help feed more people more efficiently. That's the stated aim. And that's what the buyer CEO is saying and might help alleviate hunger and poverty. How would you respond to that? Well, first of all, poisons are not food. Secondly, they grow the four commodities that are genetically modified, the corn, the soap, the canola, the soya, the cotton. Only 10% of the corn and soya goes into human food. The rest is going into biofuel and animal feed. In no other sector, is the method of production not reflected in the final price. In only in agriculture, because farmers are first manipulated to sell costly inputs, and with these corporations, an attempt to sell patented seed, which is illegal in countries like mine. Then they exploit the farmer by buying cheap commodities, and then they have partnerships with the cargoes of the world to monopolize the trade market. So at every level, the producer is suffering and the investors are gaining, the traders are gaining. Neither Monsanto nor Bayer have a history of food production. They have a history of chemical production. Farmers produce 70% of the food that we eat even today, small farmers. That is FAO data. We need to expand the ex efficient systems that actually give food without destroying the planet, not the inefficient systems that use 10 times more input to then produce a commodity that doesn't go into food. This is good public relations, bad as science, bad as a reality of where we get our food and what is in the food. Mashiva, if there was less coercion and 
more options for farmers, would you be open to hearing them out? As just one player among many, and the problem is that they refuse to be one player among many. They want their so-called tools to become property rights, shaping, ownership of seed. Those are the legal cases being fought between the government of India and Monsanto today. Those are the cases around the safety assessment of a GMO mustard, which is a buyer mustard, which was rejected in 2002. But these corporations do not know how to hear a no from governments or regulators or people. Yes, it's one as method. And the method should be assessed in an honest way, both by farmers on socioeconomic grounds, by regulators on grounds of safety, and by competition commissions and antitrust bodies on grounds of competition. Those are all issues being discussed around these companies separately. The merger makes it even more imperative that we bring food democracy back into the picture in place of the totalitarianism of a poison cartel, because that's what they were, that's what they are. Totalitarianism of a poison cartel. Alan, are you convinced by any of that? Oh, what a wonderful uh, phrase. And if I was a poet, I might use it in a, a book. But here, here's the reality. First of all, uh, I'm going to speak for the United States because I'm a citizen of this country. And um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a few years older than uh, Ms. Shiva. So I've been around and I've seen the history. You might, might seeds, you seeds, might be seeds are, so seeds have always been proprietary in the United States long, long before uh, the name GMO was invented. So uh, farmers have always paid a premium for these high quality seeds. We used to have a more of a diversity of companies. So true, there has been monopolization, but in the United States where a lot of GMO type crops are grown, um, I don't think that our farmers who are very independent a lot um, actually feel, <laughs> feel exploited. Now, uh, they're, they're very much um, exploited, if anything, uh, or moved around by, by the commodity market. So when commodity market price of corn was very high uh, in the 2007, 2008 time frame, a lot more farmers started planting more corn over soybean. They benefited by that, but now corn prices are down. They're using the same tools. Uh, the prices have probably come down for these tools, and now they're suffering more. But this is completely independent of what seed they're buying, who they're buying it from, or anything like that. The important thing is that they have a diversity of genetic backgrounds that match their particular environment. So any seed producer, no matter who they are, unless they're producing Using this diversity that's going to be good for the farmers, uh, they're not going to buy it. Now, to the case that uh, somehow Monsanto is controlling everything, this is complete BS because they had genetically modified wheat for Roundup resistance ready to roll out, and the wheat farmers in the United States said, no way, <laughs> we're worried about our markets, and what did Monsanto do? They took it off the okay, market. So, so let's, get a, know, let's get a response from Vandana Shiva. Monsanto sure. Is that, you know, is, is that powerful? I think okay, the the Monsanto's not that po powerful, Vandana Shiva. I have talked to American farmers, and when they started to use GMO seeds, they said, the companies have a news around our neck. We grow what they give us. Today, as those crops are failing, they're not smart tools, and the price is not coming down, our calculations show $10 billion of royalty extraction from American farmers for corn and soya, 95% of which is under Monsanto's control. If that's not a monopoly, what is? Farmers are getting so disillusioned because of the corn borer, because of super weeds. The Roundup Ready isn't working. The BT crops aren't working. 17% 70, drop. And seed companies that had been brushed aside as inferior for bringing non-GM seeds, they are the ones that are helping farmers out today. This is not a miracle, and it is not the case that the prices of the seed have come down or the prices of chemical inputs have come down. They have increased. There's a recent study out from one of your universities that shows that herbivores has shot up as a result of the okay. failed Roundup Ready crops. Failed. OK, Alan Felsot and Vandana Shiva, it's been a pleasure talking to both of you. Thank you for allowing me to pick both of your brains. And I hope to speak to you again in the not-too-distant future. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.